Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Newcomers 101. Um, today we're going to talk about recreation events, and next week we're going to wrap it up uh, with the food and beverage. We've got some real good announcements coming up about the fall food and beverage and what's going to be happening with that. So we want to make sure you're out. And certainly you, next week will be the end of our program, and you will graduate from Newcomers 101. Yes! <laughs> So, again, I'm John Wedgworth. Thanks for coming out. We've been doing this since July. We've thoroughly enjoyed it. So we got some special things planned next week for our graduation. So make sure you come out for that. At this time, I'm going to turn this over to Mary Jo Page and her team, and she's going to walk us through the fabulous things they do for events here and all over our community. Mary Jo. Hello, everyone. It's nice to see you all. And I've met some of you already, and I appreciate you coming consistently. Many of you have been here quite for quite a few of these. Well, today we're trying to make it all about fun. It's recreation and events. Um, if you look at that TV um, over there, we've just added lots and lots of photos so you can see all the wonderful things that we do throughout the year. Um, Four-legged friends included. <laughs> So anyway, you can see what we're doing there with a lot of the different things over the years. Today I invited um, a couple of our team members to join us. We have Abby Julian right here. She, Abby is the manager of recreation and events. Kim Toth. Kim is an assistant manager here, and she handles corporate events and sales um, for a lot of different things. And then I've got two of our other teammates back there that are hiding. They didn't want to have like a participation kind of thing. We've got Trish, who's our marketing coordinator, and Pow is fairly new here. Um, she's killing it. She's helping Kim a lot with organizing corporate events and other events here in the conference center. Okay. As I said, we're all about fun, and we positioned Fairfield Glade a couple years ago with the positioning line of Now the Fun Begins. Are you all having fun? Yes. <laughs> Good. Good. That's what it's all about. And um, these ladies here make it look effortless um, with all the planning that goes into all of these events, but um, there's a strong team behind, um, very small team, but a very strong team that goes behind all the planning. You are in the building called the Center, and are you all familiar with everything that we have here? Have you wandered around a little bit to see all the things? Well, this is one of three ballrooms. We do a lot of different things in these ballrooms. We can break them up into three, or we can use one full one for like the ladies club. We have an indoor gym in here that we also do pickleball. We have an indoor pool, which is fabulous. We have ping pong, pool, Shuffleboard, that's usually in the last room of these three. We've got a track man. Has anyone used the track man here? No? Any golfers in here? Okay. <laughs> You'll probably use the track man during the winter. Um, a lot of people will come in when the weather goes south on us, but a lot of people will come in with pros and get lessons in the track man room too, so that's a good use of the track man. We have a classroom in the very back of the building. Does everyone know where that is? If you go down the hallway, like you're looking through the windows of the pool, that little arcade area back there, just take a left and there's a classroom back there. And then we do have arcade games um, that we saved a few. We used to have those in the track man room and a lot of people really enjoy those, especially the grandkids. So we kept a few of the favorites and they're located down that hall. And then fairly new to the center is our sip and saver coffee shop. So that's as you walk in and you can grab some coffee and a sweet treat. Every year we do over a hundred events, if you can believe that. Um, and these ladies here are all involved in planning this. We don't have a big team, but we are mighty. <laughs> one of the one of the um, one of our residents said to us recently at one of the Grove events, "You are Wonder Women," and Abby said, "Yeah, we're wondering what we're doing." <laughs> Because <laughs> truly, I, it's amazing all the things we do. And the great thing about these events is most of the events are actually free. So you can attend these events and just have a great time. We just put some statistics up here. I won't bore you with all the details, but some people are very surprised to see what we actually do, you know, and how many people come through this building. 
our team here is fabulous. I was telling a couple of the ladies, if you ever have questions, come to the center. It truly is the center for information, the center for a lot of things. Our front desk, the team up there is fabulous. If they can't answer a question, they'll track it down for you. You can call here or you can stop by. We'd love to see you. In this building, we do a lot of different events. We do lots of events for our residents. Ladies Club always meets here once a month, the first Wednesday of every month. Do we have any Ladies Club members? Okay, great. That's wonderful. That's a great organization to get involved with. We also do events to outside groups. We've had residents have weddings here. We've had other people outside of Fairfield Glade have weddings here. We've done memorial services here. Every um, year, up until COVID, we were doing Veterans Day dinners here. Um, we just do all different kinds of things. Um, and So this is a great meeting place and a great place for you all to come. Okay, bus trips. We used to do lots and lots of bus trips, um, and this was prior to COVID. We got a little sidelined with the COVID, but we've got two buses. We've got a 14-passenger bus and a 25-passenger bus. We are hopeful that the world will get back to normal next year, and we'll be able to do bus trips again. But just know that the buses are also available to rent. So if you have an event, and we've had quite a few people do this, if they have a family reunion or a wedding or something like that, that, and they don't want people driving after hours, especially if they've been drinking, you can rent a bus here and shuttle people around, which is really good to know. And it's very reasonable. But these flyers just kind of give you an idea of what types of trips we've done in the past for bus trips. And we'll be putting that information out as the bus trips start again. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to Abby. Well, Druid Pool is, uh, we have two outdoor pools, the Druid Pool and the Dorchester Pool. Uh, Druid is a family-friendly pool, and so we do a lot of events out there with uh, the kids. So they, uh, we've seen, well, as you see, about 9,000 people out there, uh, over, and that's in a, from Memorial Day to Labor Day. So that's a, a good crowd of people. But we try to do uh, special events. We uh, have done pool parties and stuff out on Thursday nights, uh, and so we hope to bring that back this year. We I kind of curtailed that for the last couple years, but uh, you should see that back uh, probably this year. Uh, we'll start those back up uh, as well. We'll kind of feel our way through and see how we uh, how we do on that. Uh, but uh, it's a great team of people. There's about uh, nine people that really run that for the season. Uh, our We have a certified pool operator, uh, Josh, who you'll see around here, who takes good care of all the pools uh, here in Fairfield. There's three uh, as well. So, uh, But uh, that's a uh, great time for uh, kids and families to come out uh, and enjoy. Dorchester Pool is uh, adults only, uh, 18 and above, and that is the only pool that you can take your cooler. Uh, so if you want to have an adult beverage, no glass uh, permitted, but if you want to take a cooler and have your adult beverage, uh, you're welcome to, uh, to come on out. Uh, we do have some exercise classes out at, at both of them, and you'll see they're just big kids over there, that picture at the end. Uh, they have the horse races and stuff on the 4th of July and uh, uh, do their own kid, uh, a big kid at heart events as well so uh, that's a good time uh, out there so uh, you can check that one out there Nancy Bettis is the lead uh, person over there and over at Druid it's Sandy uh, and she also works at the front desk during the um, during the winter season so you can stop by and see her Kim uh oh Mo I'm mini golf <laughs> uh, in the indoor pool uh -huh. yeah we service all three yeah uh, all three of them yeah Over at Creekwood Mini Golf, and so we say, you know, we have five championship golf courses. Well, it's really six. Unless you've been to my esteemed Creekwood course, you've not seen Fairfield Golf, you know? 
So uh, we, we've been working on that for the last few years, adding little things, cleaning things up. So if you've not been out there, uh, we added some spinners over there and uh, so it enhances the game. You have to uh, take a point or uh, each one of the spinners are a little bit different. And so that makes it kind of fun. Uh, we added the big uh, red chair out there for family pictures and we put a big blue chair uh, out front here. So that those have been super popular. But um, again, there's a, a small group of people out there that are dedicated making sure that everybody's having a lot of fun uh, out there uh, so uh, usually October gets pretty busy out there so we leave the attendant out there until the end of October so they go out there first week uh, the end of May um, prior to Memorial Day and then they'll be out there through October 31st and then you'll get your equipment and stuff here at the conference center if you uh, your family and stuff come in town you want to go out there you then you can stop and pick everything up here at the conference center all right, now it's Kim's turn. Sorry, I'm the short one of the group. <laughs> I'll try to make it short. <laughs> Um, so I'm Kim Toth and I do a lot of things here. I've been on this team for quite some time and have worked with many, many, many folks doing many, many, many things, as you can see from the pictures. So um, our library multipurpose building, um, it is a very popular place. Uh, the library itself uh, does about 1,100 library books a month and it is run on a strictly volunteer basis. Um, so those ladies and the gents that are over there, a lot of times they get the husbands to come in and help with the bookshelves or something. They work very hard over there. Um, we've tracked the numbers that go through our library uh, for quite some time just to see, you know, is it being used? Is it being used properly? And I was absolutely astounded when I seen the number of books a month that were through there. Um, they also have games and movies and things like that. So if you're kind of one of those, it's a cold day and you're like, dang, I wish I had a puzzle. You can go over there and see those folks and they're happy to check one out. And all you need is your member card that's all you gotta have um, so uh, it's a great place to be a lot of folks like to use the space over at the library for multiple things whether it's cards or meetings or fun functions we have dances over there we've got you know some dinners uh, you'll find like a lot of the golf leagues after they're all done including the Creekwood you know, mini golf league, you know, because that's really important. Um, they'll be over there and they have their end of the year parties. Uh, and if it's something you're doing that it is not um, for profit, for instance, you're not over there selling your Mary Kay, um, it is free use for a member to be able to schedule um, a time to go over. Maybe you've got some family members coming in and you just want a bigger place for everybody to eat because your house won't house all the kids and the grandkids and they're bouncing around and you'll only got one bathroom who knows but it's a great place to go um, you just stop in here at the front desk and um, they can check availability for you and it's a very simple form that you would fill out to be able to request that space um, you are able to request that up to four months in advance so you can make some advance planning for it okay any questions on the library you might mention it fills up very oh it does it fills up very quickly yes ma'am Okay, so that's an excellent question. Um, the question was, if she wanted to um, get her free space for a party and somebody decided they wanted the same day or same time, does she get bumped out? So we exercise what we call a first right of refusal. So we would call you and say, hey, we have a paying customer that would like to come in and use this space. Can we accommodate a different time or a different room? Um, or would you like to pay for it? Um, and if that's the case, if you'd like to pay for it, of course, you're there. Um, otherwise, you know, we try to be extremely responsible with everybody's, you know, dues and membership monies here. And it is important that we do take care of everybody. You know, we, we take a good fiscal responsibility. So if we do have an opportunity to rent a space, we would definitely do that. Um, so, but we try our very best. There is quite a bit of room. People are extremely gracious and very flexible. So we do our very best to not have that happen. But there can be a conflict sometimes. Any other questions on the library? Yes. Okay, so the hours of the library proper where you would check out books is 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Monday through Friday. 
and sat and Saturday. My apologies. And Saturday. Now, as far as using the rooms, um, you can use those rooms just about. We don't like you party until two o'clock in the morning. I wouldn't think, you know, <laughs> that people over by Drew would might be like, "Woo, they're having a good time. We're coming too." All right. Um, so, but basically, you can choose any time that you would like to have a gathering over there. Um, there is a key process. You would come here and check out a key so that you would be responsible for locking now uh, the doors back whenever you're done, especially if it's not within normal business hours of the center. Um, our housemen do go over and secure the building, but of course, if you're staying until nine o'clock because you're having a dinner event, then um, you would have a key to be able to lock those doors up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so rental fees. There is a member rate and a guest rate for the library building, and it's broken down into four hours or less or five hours or more. So a half a day or a full day rental is what we like to call that. It is also broken down by the rooms. If you just need one room, if you need a combination of two rooms, because if you've not ever been over there, one of the rooms has a divider kind of like here. So you can have the smaller portion or the bigger portion. Um, and then we also have room C. Um, and room C is kind of down below, and it is another um, good size space. It's good for parties of probably maybe 40 people. Um, so the prices do vary according to that but it is very 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 reasonable I thought I saw yes sir there are audiobooks at the library yes um, and large print so if you're looking for large print or audiobooks they do have a pretty great selection um, just so you know some folks go out and buy those things and then they're like okay what do I do with this when I'm done I'm an avid reader love to read I don't choose to read books twice so they do accept donations there too of very gently used books or audio books and then they can share it with the rest of the community yes ma'am okay so if you're Okay, so the question is, is it published anywhere, any classes that are at the library building? Um, my suggestion would be to visit the website, and there are all the clubs are on the website. Mostly that's who offers the classes, like line dancing, yoga, there's um, stretch classes, and they're all listed right there with the contact information on our website. And it's very easy to print it off. If you don't have a printer or you're not really sure where to go, on the website you can stop in at the front desk on your way out and they'll have a copy of that for you then we highly suggest you contact the instructor of the class that you may be interested in and they can um, let you know from there if there's a fee or what time they meet and the days that they meet the yes ma'am mm-hmm um, it would be at Fairfield, fairfieldgladeresort.com. Mm -hmm. My pleasure. Any other library questions? Ooh, I'm cooking. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the square. The square is located at the corner of Peavine and Stonehenge Drive. Um, up there, we do tons of events. We have a cruise in every summer. There's... Um, uh, uh, farmers markets on Wednesdays and on Saturdays up there uh, we do hold like our community yard sale that's coming up um, will be held there uh, so if you see something that says it's at the square that's where you need to be um, sometimes we'll have um, our craft shows usually on the holiday weekends are held at that venue we'll have music there's food there's fun um, every now and then Abby gets something going on and says I think I'll throw in a family fun day <laughs> and family is you know for young old anybody in between littles bigs it doesn't matter there's always something for everybody up there um, it's also a great place just to kind of go say for instance you have a small little book club or you've got um, you know just a little meeting you'd like to have there's two beautiful gazebos there there's a small pavilion with some picnic tables it's just really a nice place to kind of go and hang out um, we do ask if you take your pets with you and of course this is anywhere in Fairfield that you pick up after your pets but they're welcome there too four-legged friends are always our friends also 
um, the square is available for rent. Um, you can do that half day, whole day, half square, whole square. <laughs> um, but sometimes maybe, you know, your church is looking for a venue or something to have a, a picnic at, or they're looking for, you know, a small fundraising site. So that's a really excellent place to have it. It's high visibility as people are going by. Hey, what's going on there? You know, you have a sign out or a banner. And sometimes that makes it just great dropping kind of fun. Square questions? Not nearly as cool as the library? Is that? <laughs> all right. Robin Hood Park. This is Abby all the way, right here. I just want you to know they are super excited when I say, man, I got a great idea. <laughs> I can tell by the roll in their eyes. <laughs> I think it's excitement. <laughs> yeah, one of my uh, uh, past employees, you would say, and when in 2022 do you want to have that? <laughs> she wouldn't even let me put it on my calendar. <laughs> well, we, we do uh, a lot of different events. This here is uh, going to be, uh, we've had this first, uh, I'm a, nope, I can't go over there. Does this have a little pointer, Kim? Yeah. Um, right here, the top right hand corner. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So right this area right here is our current existing area and the, with the two pavilions. And so we are super excited that uh, the renovation and what's coming up uh, with Robin Hood Park. Uh, the Veterans Memorial is uh, something currently uh, that I'm blessed to be on that committee as well uh, to de and the development of that, uh, that area right here in the yellow uh, will be that. So if you have not heard anything there's some information out at the front desk about that that's that's super uh we you the amount of veterans we have here in fairfield uh is amazing uh so uh but uh, we'll have the bocce i think uh uh you'll talk about a little bit about the bocce ball i think we're talking about bocce ball being in uh maybe in the by the spring uh the new pavilion uh but the parking lots are in there we're working on getting the quotes and things for like the new playgrounds and things so that area being developed that's going to be something special uh when you're coming into fairfield that that uh, that'll be definitely be a Head turner uh, over there, so uh, we're excited about that. Any questions about Robin Hood Park? I think you could ask me or, or John about that uh, coming up. Yep. Yeah, we're several years out from the end of the project. It's going to be done in phases. Uh, forward looking, a lot of that has not been approved in the budget. They're in there for twenty. Any questions about that? Hey, I'm, I'm just going to go back. I'm just a little bit in the library. One of the things that Kim has done and put in place is uh, if you have a reunion coming in, to make sure that you're talking with uh, Kim or Pal back there in the corner uh, with uh, working on some rates for special rates for the pool and for mini golf. We've uh, given some wristbands and things out, and we'll put a, together a package for you uh, so that uh, your reunion uh, can go there. That was a nice, uh, and people have used that a lot so that's a nice uh, thing that uh, that kind of came from Kim uh, so okay uh, the Grove huh? did you guys all make it to the Grove this year yes. nope wow that's 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 amazing uh one of the few yeah. <laughs> uh so we, the the new anderson's built uh, the uh the pavilion and things like that's their property and uh, it's hosted uh, all the mirror lakes this uh this season and then they've added some friday and saturday events with different music we've tried some uh, had some couple mo movies and things up there uh so we've had a variety of uh things i love that little beer garden area Area where all the tables and the chairs and they're all lit up and there's uh, I mean we had a great time on Friday and Saturday nights with the small events over there uh, so uh, but that's a, a work in progress as well uh, so there's a phase two of that I, th I believe they're going to be adding restrooms to that uh, this year so those will be in there for uh, next year but I think they're and, and talking there's be some other improvements he, again he's doing that in phases too uh, as well and so and just so you know on those Friday and 
and Saturday events, the Andersons pay for them themselves. It's not a club sponsored. Uh, Mondays, we take care of that through Dave Kirk Automotive as our sponsor for those, and that's how those uh, are paid. And then the Andersons brought in all the entertainment themselves uh, and paid for that. So for the community. Yes. Uh -huh. The Andersons are the new developers uh, in in Fairfield. Mary Jo, would you like to talk, answer to that a little bit? Well, and John, you can talk. And maybe John will talk to you a little bit about the. De We're recording this, so we don't need to make it. Um, Tom, Tom Anderson is the primary developer here in Fairfield Glade. He also owns Fairfield Glade Homes. Um, so that's his property where the Grove is located. Okay, now from a uh, Fairfield Glade Community Club, we invested with that Grove project with the paving pass, some lightings, and we're looking at uh, bathrooms going forward for next year so we can get out of the porta potty business. <laughs> Uh, which would be good. Uh, so that's what Tom is. He's a very important developer here in our community. So he's also developing up on the ridge, Chestnut Hill up that area. That's mostly his project up there. So that team makes a big impact in our community. So. And they do have a website as well. Um, if you, if you want to go on that uh, and see that. It's the, because you can sign up for their e-blasts as well. Yeah, and then, Facebook page. yeah, Facebook, the Grove at Fairfield Glade, if you want to go on and look at that on Facebook. <laughs> Any other questions about the Grove? That's a, that's a super exciting area. I, I anticipate that we'll be doing a lot of events over there. There's not. That, uh, this was the last one uh, uh, over there for the season, but I, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Possibly a Christmas, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So he's asking about uh, expanding the food vendors at the Mirror Lake concerts. So finding food vendors has been a bit challenging. Uh, so finding people that can handle, because uh, I mean, you can get a food vendor, but uh, we were looking, so for example, looking at the taco person. Well, it took seven minutes to get our order. Well, at a two-hour concert, uh, they can service maybe. Uh, you know, maybe 40. Uh, so finding the right vendors uh, for that uh, has been challenged. And finding a vendor that says, well, I can't, uh, my challenge this year was, well, I'll lose my spot over at the Rule King if I come on Saturday or Monday to you, because it's very competitive. If you've noticed, there's a whole lot of uh, uh, food vendors out there, uh, trucks out there now, and so much not brick and mortar, they are going to uh, their food trucks. And then so they're established in their place. Oh, I'm going to be at Staples. Oh, I'm going to be at Rule King. Oh, I'm going to be. And so that's been one of the challenges this year of finding a, a food vendor. So we've been uh, pretty fortunate to have Lisa who can do multiple things. They, uh, they do large events. Uh, um, they have a lot of experience doing that and getting expedited as fast as they can. So um, anyhow, but we'll, we're always looking for them. We got a list of uh, food vendors that we can have, uh, but finding the right spots because we can have a lot of food vendors there but where you know logistically the lines you know when you're running the lines trying not to make them because I don't know if you were at the other uh, venue that we had they would be right in, right down the middle of the concert and so then the people behind them couldn't see because of the long line so logistically working on uh, where we would put food vendors but to answer your question is yes we're always looking for different food vendors and ones that uh, know how to handle a large crowd that's that's the tricky part. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, you can uh, on the. I think the and uh, Kylan asked on the small events uh, when it's a uh, uh, like it's up at the beer garden and it's a small event that you, you use the food vendor. Uh, but if it's a large concert on the main stage, absolutely, people can bring their own uh, coolers and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? 
Well, stay tuned. I mean, we're, we're going to be working on uh, some um, the, the lineup for Mirror Lake. So if there was somebody that you heard that was uh, uh, that you really liked or somebody, I never really go out looking for a band uh, for Mirror Lake. Uh, people always say, hey, yeah, I was over at so-and-so and, so and, so, and I heard this and here's their information. And so what I do is I try to go out and at least hear them or go online and hear them and then see if they're in our budget and that we can uh, work it in. Uh, but uh, all of the bands that have been over there have been people who seen somebody somewhere uh, and enjoyed them. So, yeah. Yeah, we're working on uh, we're working on that one. I, I text Kylan a lot and say, "Hey, we love this one." Uh, I don't know. Did anybody go to Hurricane Ruth the other night? I, mean, I thought she was really good too. There was there was a lot of good, but I, Utopia I thought was a it was a show, not just uh, not just music. So I really enjoyed them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm gonna try and get him. Uh, yeah, so uh, we were t kind of talking uh, uh, a little bit about that, and the t it's about the timing of it. So we'll certainly check into him and see if we can get them. We enjoyed him. He, what a nice man. What a, a genuinely nice man. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, Dave Kirk Automotive is a corporate sponsor, and he, uh, so it's kind of split. Uh, he probably pays for uh, pays three. For most. Yeah. He pays for most. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anytime you get a second to thank him, we sure appreciate him uh, uh, doing that. It's allowed us. I've been here uh, going on my 14th year. And so when we started for, uh, Mirror Lake, it probably had about 200 people that attended it. And so just over the years, we've just added a little bit and tried to bring in a bigger band. Then we got a sponsor and then we were able to bring in a little bit bigger band. And so we've just evolved it. Uh, it didn't really have a, a, well, it had a food vendor, but I think we did it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, so, no, they don't, but uh, I can tell you that probably 80% of the food sales and the beer sales come from Wyndham Guests. Most of our residents know to bring their coolers, bring their things, and so, uh, so yes, they do. Uh, they, uh, they support it a lot, to be honest with you, uh, through... Yeah, uh, no, they, uh, yeah. Anything else? Extra holidays. I'm back. Extra holidays. <clears throat> Stay and play packages and golf packages. One of the other hats that uh, on the team that I happen to wear is uh, I do a lot of corporate events, uh, golf packages. If you happen to have, um, say, family or friends that want to come visit you because you're in a new place and you think it's so cool and you keep bragging about it, and you say, hey, you're up there, you're up north, or you're down south where you're cooking, you need to come here and visit us. It's beautiful. It's great. Um, but then you say, dang, I've only got one extra bedroom. Um, so you are welcome to go on extra holidays. Holidays.com, uh, and you can look at the rates there and be able to put them up in the Wyndham condos. Or if you need help with that, um, it's my pleasure to help you. My card is at the front desk, or you can pick on Pow. Pow's card is up there also. Um, but we kind of specialize in small groups and um, small gatherings to come and be able to stay with us. And maybe you've just got some friends that want to check out the area. Maybe they're considering moving or retiring here. Um, so so we are definitely happy to have um, um, folks come and stay with us. We have a playthrough package, which includes a couple nights and a $50 dining card. And we call it playthrough um, because there's a lot more to Fairfield than just golf. Um, we've got lakes and we've got hiking trails and we have stables on property and we've got, you know, bird watching and you name it, it's here. So we like to say that, hey, you're coming here to play, but you're going to play all the way through um, the things we have to offer. As far as golf packages go, you do get advanced 
advanced tea times and such if you book the package and lodge. Um, so if you've got some friends that like to do that and they would like to come with us and play on our six championship courses, okay, <laughs> then um, <laughs> then um, uh, we are welcome to be able to handle that and all the details. Um, it has led into something that's become a little bit bigger, which is inviting some corporate uh, events or larger groups um, to come in. We've had retreats here. We've had um, some local big name companies come in and spend days with us, lots of dollars with, with us. They've been able to play golf or go on the pontoons or have a great time. Um, we do specialize sometimes in family reunions. Hey, you know, there's 60 of my family and friends coming and like Abby mentioned, if you've got kids and such involved, we'll hook you up over there by the, the Druid Hills Recreation Area or we could put you out, you know, at one of the marinas for, you know, some kind of a party. We rent the pools after hours so it's kind of limitless um, when it comes to coordinating these things making them happen um, you you will also see us here at the center we do a lot of business out of the ballrooms and I always say I'm the nuts and bolts gal uh, where would you like your tables and where would you like your chairs and how would you like it to look um, all those little details they kind of come in that's that's kind of my specialty on this team that's what I do um, and it gives me a chance to meet tons of people and lots of great people and make sure everybody's having a great time any questions on golf packages or how you can okay so um, yes they're very reasonable if you go through that website definitely um, it's on our website too there is a thank you for that Mary Jo there is a link to that it says book now and you can go to that and you'll be able to see the rates there's one and two bedroom units that you're able to get so if you're looking for those four bedrooms those are usually safe for their VIP members or owners um, but you do not have to be a, a Wyndham um, point holder or an RCI point uh, holder to be able to use that um, so if you just go there you can check the rates on one and two bedrooms I can tell you the two bedrooms are a steal uh, because you can house up to six people in beds and if you've got a family that's got some children it just makes it really nice they have their own space and um, they also do get a wristband when they come in and they stay at Wyndham uh, so that does provide amenity usage at either the member rate or um, they get into the pool um, or use the workout facility next door about the extra holidays and the stay and play packages as a marketing tool this is a wonderful thing for us because our whole goal is to bring visitors here because we know if we get visitors here we can convert those people to residents not all of them but a lot of them and including the state of Tennessee has a retired Tennessee program and they move that under the tourism department because they realize the same thing we've got to bring them to Tennessee first as a visitor before we can convert them to a resident so these are great tools for us we've had people come on corporate events that decide they want to come back here and talk to us about retirement now our team doesn't sell real estate not strictly I mean we're not we don't have real estate licenses but basically we're bringing people here to help those real estate people sell homes here so these are great tools for us and extra holidays um, it's a Wyndham owned company they're based out of Orlando and we have a great relationship with them we get a corporate rate from them so that we can book these when we do any of these bookings they're earmarked as our guests so you they basically come here and they just enjoy the community as a resident would so it's a great tool for us to help sell the community and bring more of you in here <laughs> any other questions on this yes sir <clears throat> Correct. How long are they going to continue the pontoon cruises? Right now, Dartmoor Marina is still open and they will be available through October. Good, Mary Jo. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so there's a number of different ways that you can connect with us, and I have people asking me this all the time, so we wanted to show you a few places where you could do this. The best place to go is our website, and it is fairfieldgladeresort.com, and at the bottom of the page, there's a couple of little icons. Has everyone signed up for eBlast to get our emails? I hope you will because that's really important. We send out a Friday e-blast every week and that has all the upcoming events for the, the week ahead. And that's a really good tool for you to understand what's going on in the community. So open up your emails. Um, another way to connect with us is to um, are you Facebook? Anyone do Facebook, social media? Okay, that's a great way too because Trish does a great job back there posting a lot of information on Facebook about our events. So if you're into social media, please sign up for Facebook as well. And then on the bottom of the website, there's a little icon with a calendar. We try to put all of the events on that calendar. So let's say you do have family coming in in December. You can go on that calendar and look to see what events are coming up so or friends that are coming in and kind of figure out when would be a good time for them to get involved in some of the events that we have going on we try to keep that up to date so just check out that calendar as well those are really good ways to connect with us digitally Oh, and also, as, um, as Kim mentioned, there's that book now on the website, too, so you can get to Extra Holidays. I know Trish has been doing a great job putting this also in our bulletin, but definitely sign up for these member tax notifications, too. Um, these will come out from our admin office primarily, but they'll also come out from the police department if there's road closures this winter. I mean, I'm praying that we have a really mild, nice winter, but you never know, and sometimes we'll have ice situations and things like that and you'll get text notifications about facilities being closed or roads being closed that kind of thing and then every week um, Trish has done a great job with this Trish puts together what we call the bulletin and it's a two-page spread in the Glade Sun and it's every single week and that comes out on Tuesdays most of you if not all of you should be getting that in your mailbox but if for some reason you're not we have extra copies here in the center the Glade Sun is a great tool for information um, there's also another local paper called the Vista and they cover a lot of information on Fairfield Glade to those are our two local papers here's our contact information we also have business cards um, at the front desk if you have any questions feel free to ask us email us call us stop by a lot of residents will just pop in to see me my office is right next to the track man room Abby and Kim are also in this office uh, Pow and Trish we're all here so um, if you need something please don't hesitate to ask we're here to help you and answer any questions that you might have and we want we want to welcome you and we hope Hope you have a lot of fun here while you're living here. Yes. Do they ever plan the question was, do we ever plan dinner dances? There's a couple of groups that do dinner dances. Abby, do you want to talk about dinner dances at all? Because we've done some of those in the past. So we will have um, coming up in the, probably in the fall. We have done them in the past, uh, but before the social distancing. I came in uh, with like cabin fever concerts we've done them uh, then I there's a couple of, uh, like she said a couple other dance groups in town uh, then in the area that do them as well so but yes uh, the answer would be yes to your question yes uh, yes and we and we probably uh, moving forward we'll do some if there's any had here they'll be here uh, they've done them at the legends in the past but the, all that will be moved here mm -hmm. Our challenge, too, is um, because we've kind of gotten out of Legends and Druid Hills has gotten out of the banquet business, per se, we're using outside caterers for those types of things. Going forward with, hopefully, life is going to get a little bit more normal again. We'll be looking at everything. The last two years, unfortunately, you all moved here in the last two years. It's just been a little odd, you know, for planning things. A little odd <laughs> for planning things, but there's definitely an interest in the community for dance too so we'll definitely be looking at that does anyone else have questions for us today okay 
the question was, does the center offer like yoga classes and exercise classes? No, not at this time we don't. Most of those classes are actually um, residents that offer the classes and they'll usually do it for a small fee. So they rent the space from us. That's why we don't necessarily publicize them like in the e-blast. That's an independent person that's going off and doing that on their own with their own business. But a lot of people really enjoy doing um, yoga, exercise, line dancing, um, and you can you can find that schedule as Kim said on the website. And then next door also, yeah, I was going to say the wellness center next door. Um, the wellness center I, I, has anyone been over there? That's actually owned by the hospital, Cumberland Medical Center, and there's a fitness center there. There's an indoor pool there, and they do some classes. I, I know they have a personal trainer over there too. Um, in addition to the wellness center, there's a doctors' offices. There's a walking clinic. You can get lab work done. Um, mammography is offered. So that. That's a really great tool for our residents too if they don't feel like driving all the way into town six miles <laughs> to go do some of those things it's been very helpful for us having medical facilities out here too sure no I think yes yeah go ahead I thought there were yes it's run. <laughs> I thought there were. Yes. Um, no. So so um, they're they're not provided necessarily by the club, but the yarn patch used to be right on Peavine Road, and they've moved into town to another little shop. And I know they have a Facebook page and a website, and they offer spinning classes. They offer knitting, crocheting. But if you don't want to travel to town, I might suggest that you start your own. Um, that's how. Ex but I, you kind of smile at that. But that's exactly how we have gotten a lot of the clubs and some of the services that we've gotten here is a resident has said, hey, I would love to do this. And if there's ever a cheesecake club, I know some people that would be testers. Jared in the back there, he's 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 just waiting for that in the chocolate chip cookie club. Um, but no, on a serious note, um, a lot of times that's exactly what happens is you say, hey, I'd like to do this. Or maybe you shout at us and say, I'm thinking about you know, doing a crochet class. Uh, that's a perfect um, way to maybe use the classroom too. You can promote the class a little bit and hang out in there because we get a, you know, how many you know, folks coming through our doors. And um, that's a good way to take advantage of that. But I would definitely check the yarn patch. Mm -hmm. And also on, on, if, on Main Street, sorry. And also, um, we had to reschedule that Get Involved Expo, but that is a great way to learn more about different clubs and organizations and volunteer opportunities. We've moved that now to the 22nd, and it'll be indoors, so we won't have to worry about the weather. It'll be actually in this building. Um, I really encourage anyone to come, but especially new residents, because everyone's looking for ways to get involved in the community, and there's lots of wonderful organizations that are represented there, as well as clubs and um, like Kim said a lot of people will start their own groups Abby and I had a woman approach us about organizing volleyball so um, yeah so we're, we're looking into doing that possibly in the gym so it's just it's really a matter of like kind of a grassroots effort with our residents because there's so many different interests in the community oh, there you go So there you go. See, ask and you shall receive. This woman literally caught Abby and I. We were in a golf cart going over to the Grove to work on the concert, and she caught us on the pathway and said, I love volleyball. I just moved here. Would, would anyone have an interest in doing that? And we'll put something out in the bulletin. Okay, great, Abby. Perfect. Any other questions? I think we put a few flyers back there for the Get Involved Expo, if you haven't seen that, as well as the community yard sale, which is up at the square this Saturday. So if you're looking for things, you you know can check that out as well. And listen, I'm always willing to try something once. <laughs> <laughs>
about yeah. that choice. Well, and what we found, <laughs> well, and what we found too is at different times, sometimes there's interest, and sometimes they're not. There's not. So we'll circle back on occasion and, and try something again. <laughs> okay. Thank I, you very much for coming, and thank you, Jared, for filming as always. Hey, Mary, Mary Jo, one quick thing. This will be posted on the website under newcomers, as all of our presentations have. So if you need some different information, it'll be on there. And see you next week for graduation. <laughs> <laughs>